Zeke effect experiment, there are going to be some uh, multimeters for reading out current and voltage, and then the main part of the apparatus is this. This is a mercury light source, which does output UV, so it's important that if it's uncovered, you have it off. It doesn't have an on and off switch, you need to physically unplug it. So right now it's unplugged, so we know it's off. Now this is the bulk of the apparatus. There's a diagram on the front to help you see what's going on, but this ammeter knob is just an ammeter offset, and then this actually controls the voltage that will be going to a phototube. Now if you actually want to see what this phototube is, there's a little door in the top, and if you open it, you can see in and see what the, the phototube actually looks like. And this is really similar to the photoelectric effect experiment that you did in the simulation. Um, but in this case, it's going to be in this box. Now, you do want to have this closed if it's going to be on. There are four filters here that you can choose from by rotating this knob. And there's a label telling you roughly what the uh, wavelength is. So where this is Y43, that's going to be 430 nanometers. I recommend starting with the UV, which says 39, so that's 390 nanometers. So this lets uh, a band of light through and that's going to be selecting which part of the mercury spectrum we want. Now, the first thing you want to do is make sure that this is aligned, that your light source is aligned with the hole that goes uh, to the phototube. And then before you plug in the light source, you want this to be covered up. Now, the on-off switch for the apparatus is over here, so you might want to turn this on and make sure that light comes on before really getting it covered. And now that it's covered, I can plug it in, and the mercury source will be on. So now you have to actually connect your multimeters to see any sort of readout. And remember that in the simulation, you could physically see what the electrons were doing. But now all you have is the readout of your of voltage that you're applying and the current that that results in. So the top one is going to be just your measurement of voltage. And that goes from about 0 to 4 volts, so you can use your multimeter on DC volt setting. So you make your connections as normal. And then the other thing you need to measure is your current. Now this current's going to be really small, so I'm going to start by showing you what you might see. And as normal, ground to ground. And in this case, because it's a really small current, you want this, um, the current reading to be on the 2 milliamp setting. So I turn these on, my light source is on, but my phototube is all the way down. Now I see that my voltage reading right now is zero, and my current reading is also zero. So if we turn the phototube knob just so that it clicks, our phototube voltage is still zero. In the simulation, this would correspond to that there not being a battery involved. But now that we've clicked it on, we see that we are getting a current. Now it's important to note that this is in milliamps, so this is 0 0.02 milliamps. As we turn the phototube voltage up, we're now having about 2-3 volts, that is our, that voltage preventing the electrons from getting in, getting over. You now see that your current has decreased by about half. But you see that we don't have a lot of sensitivity here. So what I would recommend that you do instead, turn the device off, and instead of using this multimeter, which isn't very sensitive, you're going to use this really nice multimeter. So the black one goes to this comm here, and the red one goes to what reads 500 milliamps. And you turn it on. Now, initially, it takes a second for it to adjust, and it defaults to reading voltage. So to make it read current, you need to hit shift, this blue button. And then you go up to where it says DCV. If you look above it in blue, it says DCI. That's DC current. You hit that button, and now it's reading milliamps DC. Now, note that this is four digits after the decimal place, so this can give you a smaller reading than the turquoise multimeters do. So you want to see milliamps DC, and now as you turn the device on, you see that we're again reading like 0 0.02, but in this case, it's now 0 0.028 three or eight, uh, four. So we have more digits, and as we turn up the voltage, my other multimeter reads what my phototube voltage is, but we now have much more accuracy here and can read a much smaller number. Part of what you're doing is looking for when it reads zero, and when you finally see this read zero, you know that none of your electrons are making it over. And
and you can then read what the voltage is. So please do use this. The, you don't actually need to use the second multimeter for anything because this is going to give you a much better reading. So one of the things you need to do in this lab is rotate through different filters. Before you change the filter, please unplug the light source so that it's not just shining out UV everywhere. And then you're going to repeat through this uh, looking at the relationship between your photo current and your applied voltage. One of the things that you can do if you like to look at this and have time, you can actually move your light source back a little bit, which will decrease the intensity because intensity goes as 1 over r squared. So you can decrease the intensity of your light source by pulling it back, making sure that the space between your apparatus and the light source is always covered to see what effect that has on the properties you're studying. When you're done, make sure to turn the photo tube all the way off, turn your apparatus off, turn your multimeters off, and again, always unplug your light source from the wall, which is the only way to turn it off.